you see this this is what it looks like On today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, I'll be sharing with you a little side dish, something that you can use on your Easter dinner table, but it's used all over. But let me pause right here to say special thanks to my patrons that have been making my page possible. If you would like to be a part of my Patreon family, check in the description, click on that link and show us some love or meet the family right on over there. Our post notification shout outs today normally go right up there. So, as I said before, it's a nice side and it is, I'm not sure how much we do it in Jamaica, but I can say this, my very first stove that meal when I was going to high school in the omic department was this meal. It was scalloped potatoes. But today I'm not using the regular Irish potatoes. I'm about to use sweet potatoes. And making it sweet pot es um, scalloped sweet potatoes. But actually I can remember they said escalloped. Escalloped potatoes. But now there's no S. They're just saying scalloped. But you tell me. I add it as escalloped potatoes. So I'm doing scalloped or escalloped sweet potatoes to that. So right here I have got me... A little flour about three tablespoons of all-purpose flour I've got here a cup of cheese um, cheddar cheese I've got here some sliced onions some chopped garlic I've got here some margarine but you could use butter butter is the better thing but if you don't have but I don't have enough butter so I am using margarine I'm gonna be using a little extra salt some cracked black pepper this dish calls for milk but I am putting coconut milk to give that flavor up Sweet potatoes here are a must. What I want to say to you is the selection and the size of the potatoes. Now, this is a dish, as we go along, you'll see that we put the potatoes. When I was doing it, we overlapped the potatoes. Some people don't. People just set them out all they want them. So, the size of the potato you know, has a lot to do with. You know, I get some small zombie. You want to try to have them almost the same size that you can have the same circumference of the sizes. So let me show you my version of these color potatoes. So I'm going to be peeling off my Jamaican yellow belly sweet potato, sparing them. I'm just going to show you how I'm doing one. This is a little more harder to handle. These, the sweet potatoes, as opposed to the regular potatoes are as we say in jamaica irish potatoes why these potatoes are more firm them tough irish potatoes they are like really soft so you can deal with them panda level there. Mm? so i'm gonna peel off this one show you how i'll be doing the other two and all of that so use your peeler don't do like me i'm an old jamaican woman coming from the old school Coming from back then, where when I use my paring knife, I find that it goes or it works better for me. Right here, I have got a container with some water, and that is for my um, potatoes not to oxidize. So I'm gonna take off here. So I'm gonna be slicing my potatoes. I don't want them really thin, thick. They are gonna be sliced like this potatoes you want them slicing if it was um harish potatoes you want to slice them a little thicker because they are like you know easier to cook so i'm going to be putting them in the water just like that and i'll be doing this you see i have these nice and they are really nice they are really sharp sister dearies these are sharp mm? and as you do that you keep it in the water when all these potatoes are peeled and sliced i will return so for this, this year we're going to need two skillet. Uh, well, a skillet and a casserole. This is also can be used as a casserole. So I'm using my little yellow brazier as a casserole and you'll see how it works. This here is my skillet. I'm going to be putting the sauce together in this skillet. So I'm going to be using about... Uh, 
three tablespoons of margarine or melted butter, whichever you have, but better butter is best. But actually, I don't have enough butter, so I am using my margarine. I'm going to be making like a sort of roux, and in this roux, I'm going to be adding my little condiments, you know? It is not... um. It is not a dish that is supposed to be filled with lots and lots of extra seasonings and all of that, you know? It's not something that is supposed to be filled like overly seasoned, you know? Yeah, so, gotta melt my butter, melted my butter, right? My margarine, since we started, you know, so you want to use a good amount because we are making just like how you would make like a, a cheese sauce or something like that. That's what I'm doing. So I'm melting my butter right here. Now we're gonna add, I added three chopped um, cloves of garlic, medium ones, yeah, so this is like, like flavoring up. It's not something that is supposed to be heavily flavored as I tell you, it's supposed to be mildly flavored with the cheese, I got cheese, a little cheese I got in a, so you know, so when you put cheese in a you know, put a bag of um, extra seasonings in there, getting out the flavor from my garlic right here, and you don't want it to get burned, so right now we're gonna add some sliced onions you could chop your onions too and you could have got more onions if you want getting my flame up and i'm gonna cook these onions off until they are like really soft during that time i'm gonna go and preheat my oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit this ear can go up to 500 degrees okay so our onions our garlic and our, our margarine have been all you know incorporated and our on their onions have been softening somewhat i like at this time to start adding my flour but i'll add it like about in three different parts so i'm gonna be adding my flour a little at a time you know and get it all cooked up when i want it get lumpy whilst adding the flour you want to like, turn it down not too high so you don't want to put too much one time for it to be lumped you know see how plain this is this is not so it's a sauce this is not a sauce to get brown Okay, so you have to be handling your hand really fast. Cooking off that raw flour in there. Yeah. And you don't have to do that, cook the flour till it turns brown like it all make gravy. Because look here, if you cook the flour too long, it will just turn brown and start make brown gravy. And then the last of my flour, this was about two and a half tablespoons. Okay. So you want to make sure that it's free of lumps on the low now is the time to add your milk whether it, with your milk of choice whether it be coconut milk which is what I'm using or you want to add your regular milk almond milk I don't know you do what you see how this is looking yes so you're gonna be adding this milk And I tell you about maybe about three cups you're gonna need. So as you start to add the milk and it catches the and it and, and it, it unincorporates with the flour and stuff, it is gonna be thickened. As soon as it starts getting thickened, you want to make sure the milk is properly absorbed each time you throw it or properly incorporated each time. You see that? So you continue to add it. And you see what it has done with the onions? It has made it so you know, so soft. And that is how you want it. The onions have been, you know, so softened now. And all like that. So you want to start, like, dealing with this, you know. Make sure you're on the working. You're working your hands right here. You're working the flour. It is coming to making that sauce. It is also thickening. And it is also just like, you know, just processing out the onions as we go along. You see the onions? Look at that. This is how you want them. So this is the breakdown of our flour, our onions, and our little garlic, and all of that. Now, we are going to be adding our cheese. And we are going to add our cheese just as we added our flour. Make sure you just add it. And let me tell you, our oven has just been, has just given off the preheated signal. Yeah, so each time you add some cheese, you want to make sure you see it all melted and everything just blending. Okay? Yeah. Put a little more cheese. So we can probably add this in about three. Yeah. The cheese has been finally added. Some extra, a little extra salt. 
because the cheese has salt in you know, but we still need like extra salt in our sauce. Little cracked black pepper mm -hmm. to your liking. And this is it. This is the thickness of what you want. You see that? Let me show you how you want it to look with my, my direct spoon. This is good enough. This consistency, it's good enough. Next clip. This is the process I, this is the part that I want you to see. Yeah. This is my skillet. And I am going to be just basting my, it's already greased. You're supposed to, not skillet, you're supposed to grease your casserole. You know, just give it a little there at the bottom. Yeah. Now, you're going to be assembling your potatoes. People put them in different ways. You put them how you want to put them. Okay? I know my, uh, when I did mine, they overlapped them. Some of these are a little thick, but with the cooking, I know they will be okay. So if you want to put them cross way, you put them cross way. Anyhow, but overlapping is normally the way. You know? Although it not have, I don't have, I have no specific way. So, but just for, what you call that, presentation cob? Yeah, just for presentation, we want to put it. Some of mine, they're a little bigger than some, as you see. But it will work, okay? So, I want to put like a little, little extra black pepper for each layer that I put. Also, I want to put a little extra salt. As we did not salt our potatoes. We didn't anything, but know what you're doing like this. Remember, you are to grease your skillet. Can have a few in here. Yep. Remember, your oven must be ready at this point. So you want to just gonna show you. I'm not gonna stay here and show you all that I'm doing. <clears throat> Some people would put additional cheese for each layer in here. But if you're a cheesy girl, you can do that. I'm not so much of a cheesy girl, you know, so I won't really do that. More potatoes overlapping and all like that. And just have fun. Do your thing. Okay? Okay, now, so this is our last layer that we have. So if you have more potatoes, you do some more layer. Depends on the size or depends on the amount where you want. Of, you know, you know me always say more means more, you know So you're making sure you leave some of your sauce for smother smother we call this smother smother it over onto your potatoes No This is so nice with the coconut family if you feel like you can get the coconut milk use the coconut milk the flavor that this coconut milk has given yeah me i do like a scraping so there it go this is a jamaican kitchen the flavor that this coconut milk has given to this thing it's just unbelievable cheese over now to how you like your cheese this thing is going to be covered and it's going to be set in the oven for about one hour and about 10 to 15 minutes okay and we are gonna also be did i say cover we are gonna cover it if you don't have anything with cover use foil paper so into the oven we go right here in the middle of the oven 375 set your oven time for one hour and 15 minutes make sure it's properly covered yeah next clip So guys this is our finished scalloped sweet potatoes and I'm gonna take out these are something that you would, I would see they mostly take it out let me get my my gloves because this thing is like seriously hot I just want to take out a piece for you
So we took it out and it has been rested. You see this? This is what it looks like. You see this? You see this potato cooked and everything? So this is what it looks like. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the support, family. I'll catch you again with another video. I hope you will try this. Make it your own. And let me tell you, this coconut milk, I would like you to try it with the coconut milk. It is just out of this world. Thanks for watching.